So before we start today's video, I wanted to do a special thank you and shout out to a couple of guys out in Toronto. You guys may have remembered from our video last year on Mario Kart 64 and how John and Patrick from HD RGB consoles gave us a Nintendo 64 that was modded for RGB. These two guys and their team essentially love modding consoles for various functions, from outputting better image quality to making consoles region free. Well, they sent us a Nintendo GameCube with an HDMI mod, and this thing is super sick. Today's episode that you're about to watch is recorded entirely with it, and I wanted to send a big thank you to these guys for hooking it up. If you want to pick up a console today, head over to www.hdrgb.com. These guys can actually service your console if you send it to them. And if you end up sending your console to them, let them know I sent you. They'll give you a 10% discount off your order. These dudes also have an Instagram, a Facebook, and a YouTube account that you can check out for more details of different consoles, behind the scene looks, and just the quality of certain videos that they record to show off their mods. Once again, a big thank you to HD RGB consoles. Enjoy today's episode on Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. Weirder is better. Give me novelty over cookie cutter any day. In video games, too often, designers stick with the same old, same old approach instead of blowing our collective minds with something super different. Some games look to the past for inspiration, while others do their own thing. And some of those are controlled with a mini bongo set. When games throw out the playbook and get weird, they stand out. They might turn out strange and frustrating, but damn it, they are memorable. Watch me conquer what is flat out the most insane Nintendo game I've ever played when I complete Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. Here comes a new challenger! Yes! Danger! Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, we complete them. Now we're all familiar with Nintendo, there's a special place in my heart for Weird Nintendo, and Donkey Kong Jungle Beat is Weird Nintendo to the max. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat is like an improv scene that never stops saying yes and. The game starts off crazy and keeps getting crazier, resulting in a never-ending parade of insanity that is outrageously fun to play. It's the weird controller experiment that shouldn't work, but it does. The result is a hidden GameCube gem that is one of the most unique and awesome Nintendo platformers I've ever played. So the life cycle of a Nintendo console almost always includes some crazy experiment with a peripheral that only works for like two games. The OG NES had things like Duck Hunt and Rob. The N64 had the microphone for Hey You Pikachu. And the GameCube had the bongos for this game and Donkey Konga. All of these will eventually be used to somehow be Dark Souls and make us all look like jackasses. The unique control scheme of slapping the bongos to move combined with clapping to stun enemies and grab stuff is a huge draw to this game, but it's not the only one. Jungle Beat's presentation is shockingly good and a surprising left turn from a lot of the previously established Donkey Kong aesthetic. My boy DK definitely visits some familiar looking jungle-rific sites, but he also visits the frickin' moon. Jungle Beat feels like an origin story. Because this game is so light on plot details, I'm left to fill in the gaps with my imagination. Friends, my imagination ran wild with this game. First off, it's just Donkey Kong. No Diddy, no Cranky, not even King K. Rule. Donkey Kong shows up and basically lays waste to everyone and everything that steps up to him while amassing a legendary banana horde. It's refreshing to play a game that doesn't give a hoot about a plot. Jungle Bee dives right in and basically says to the player either get on board or don't bother playing. You want a story? Wrong game. You want to know the power dynamics of Kong Island? Unacceptable. I'm here to smash drums and bash faces. Even if this game does not give any kind of justification whatsoever. So picture this if you will. This is what's going on in my mind. This is what I think and feel. Here's the plot of Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. Donkey Kong is running for Senate. That's why he's wearing an awesome tie. His behind the scenes campaign manager, Cranky, sends him out to canvas door to door, winning the hearts and minds of the jungle. 
The beads? Those are the votes. Obviously, DK has to collect as many as he can, and at the end of each level, he has to prove that he's the Kong of the moment and win the seat by beating the boss in a debate. Ladies and gentlemen, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat is the true origin story of how Senator Kong became the senator. That's my canon, and I'm sticking to it. Jungle Beat is an extremely streamlined game. It seems brief, but there's replay value everywhere. Every level is full of bananas, inexplicably called beats, and finishing a level with more beats earns different crests. The game tells you there are bronze, silver, and gold crests, but it doesn't tell you something vitally important, that there's a secret platinum crest to earn as well. And you know I just had to get those platinum crests to see what they would get me. This game is divided up into several kingdoms, each named after a different fruit. Each kingdom consists of just two levels and a boss fight, and these bosses are unlike anything Donkey Kong has faced before. Some of them even have the word Kong in their name, which makes me wonder, is DK going around fighting his cousins, or is it just coincidence? This game seems short, but acquiring platinum crests requires me to reach at least 1200 beats per kingdom. That's probably more bananas than I'll ever eat in my lifetime. Oh, banana. When I say that Jungle Beat is a crazy game, I mean that it throws out everything you might think you know about Donkey Kong to make something entirely unique. It's a fringy game that somehow feels like an extension of the DK universe, and the whole presentation makes Jungle Beat stand out. The world of Donkey Kong has always been strange. Banana birds, explosive barrel tech, Funky Kong, and yet somehow Jungle Beat tops everything that came before it in terms of its weirdness. This game has monkey ninjas that will murder DK with shurikens, an ice iguana that can only be defeated by throwing explosive pineapples while riding some kind of snow new. There's even bird racing, entire levels where Donkey Kong swims through floating blobs of jelly, like he's having some kind of Smucker's themed fever dream. I even experienced a free willy moment before burrowing face first into a giant pineapple. It's completely wild, and I love it. I love that Jungle Beat draws on Nintendo's own history for inspiration. There are definitely shades of Pikmin in Jungle Beat, as DK will sometimes fling himself off the stems of flowers 10 times bigger than he is. There's plenty of Mario touchstones mixed up in Jungle Beat too. Game director Yoshizaka Koizumi would even go on to direct Super Mario Galaxy, and I'm willing to bet that the space level in the Starfruit Kingdom was an inspiration. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat has original ideas of its own, too. I've always known that DK is strong, but to see the way he takes down enemies in this game made my jaw drop. DK doesn't hop on enemies to defeat them or toss a barrel and call it a day. He mercilessly destroys enemies with the ferocity of Kratos himself. I didn't know how badly I needed one of my favorite Nintendo characters to pull out the tongue of a spiky frog until it explodes. I was speechless watching my strong boy punch out the eyeballs of a towering spider. And this sleepy chicken monstrosity getting pummeled to pieces was incredibly satisfying. Jungle Beat has the honor of being rated E10+. Plus for cartoon violence. It's the only Donkey Kong game to be rated like this, and I think it's due to how much DK trashes his enemies. Best of all, none of this is given in any context. There are characters on screen between DK and the giant magical fruit that marks the end of the level, so they have to be demolished. It's the law of the jungle. It's interesting to see what's been stripped away. There are no Kong letters, no bonus barrels, there aren't even hearts to show how many hits DK can take. It's all about platforming and the combos. Nothing else matters. Everything on screen reinforces this core of the game. To be clear, Jungle Beat isn't a rhythm game. It has some rhythmic elements, and timing your slaps and claps is absolutely crucial, but the platforming isn't necessarily timed to the music. I got tripped up a couple of times because of trying to clap along to the awesome tunes, only to completely mess up a combo I was going for and flubbing up some jumps. It might seem counterintuitive, but in Jungle Beat, the player is the music that makes any sense. It was almost easier to get high scores on levels if I turned the sound down since I couldn't really hear the music over my frantic bongo playing anyways. Another weird visual thing, there's a corner of the screen devoted to DK. It's a close-up of whatever he's doing in real time. Now, I have no idea why this is here, and to me, it didn't serve any purpose whatsoever in helping to complete Jungle Beat. 
There's a lot of stuff flying around on screen at any given moment, and to have a whole corner of it devoted to the Kong felt super weird. And what's even weirder is that I didn't even notice it after a while. I thought the strangeness of Jungle Beat would be off-putting, but it's actually endearing. I love their enemies in this game that don't show up in any other DK properties. I love that DK is hyper-violent in how he deals with enemies. I love the little helper monkeys in the background parting along to the music and giving DK hints on where to find more bananas. Every level of Donkey Kong Jungle Beat feels like a tall tale that DK tells his Kong family, with all the absurdity that you can imagine. Oh, banana. Think you're getting a traditional Donkey Kong Country game? Wrong! Normal controls with buttons and a joystick? Wrong again! With its out-of-the-box control scheme, Jungle Beat smushes platforming conventions into a ball and then hurls it into space as if it's to say, GET out of HERE, NORMALACY! While it definitely has some kinks, when it works, the game feels amazing to play. On the surface, it looks like Jungle Beat is another running and jumping affair about a banana hoarding giant ape. But the bongos are what make this game. Sure, I could play this game with a GameCube controller, and yes, I know there's a version of this game for the Nintendo Wii with the more traditional controls, but screw that noise. I want to drum my way to glory with a pair of plastic bongos and no one's going to stop me. Jungle Beat was made with the bongos in mind. While they were originally designed for the Donkey Konga games, the bongos are used here in a way that is both infuriating and amazing. While Donkey Konga focused on staying on beat to music, Jungle Beat involves precision jumping, item collecting, and of course, combat. All of this is done with a controller that feels like Guitar Hero's baby cousin. I felt almost like a puppeteer and the bongos were my strings. I had to tap and slap the bongos perfectly to move through the levels. Donkey Kong has as much mobility in this game as the DK series, with backflips, wall jumps, and ground pounding that would make even Mario jealous. But all of these moves are executed with just two buttons and a microphone sensor to pick up claps. If it seems like there's no way that this could work properly, you're partially right. The first four kingdoms of this game, banana, orange, watermelon, and apple, felt easy. I earned gold crests without trying too much and thought to myself, you know what, I've got this. I am one with the bongos. Bananas were plentiful and gathering them with combo-tastic jumps, flips, and claps felt sublime. But nothing else compares to the epic boss fights, especially against other Kongs. They make me feel like I'm entering a crowded political debate field to show why I'm the best Kong around to run the jungle. Go with me on this. It's one giant gorilla versus another, surrounded by cheering fans who can be swayed one way or the other. Clapping to dodge an attack and staggering an opponent is like watching a rival fumble an easy question, and pummeling them into oblivion is like making a witty and memorable comeback that goes viral. Does anyone else see what I'm going for here? Donkey Kong for President 2020. I want Vice President Diddy Kong, Secretary of Defense Chunky Kong, and Health and Human Services Funky Kong. That's right, Alex Azar, Funky Kong is coming for you! Now, the other bosses aren't quite as memorable, and the same types of fights repeat as the game goes on. At first, I thought it was lame that the bosses didn't change all that much, but by the time I fought this giant, terrifying bird for the fourth time, the battle had gained several additional layers of craziness. To unlock the most creative and difficult levels in Jungle Beat, I had to bend the bongos to my will. I mentioned before how Jungle Beat was lying to me when I said it was only three crests per level to unlock, but getting the Platinum Crests is the only way to fully complete this game and see some fun end credit bonuses. Platinum Crests are the ultimate show of Bongo Mastery, because it's not about just finding secret potassium filled stashes in the level, though of course that's part of it all. What becomes vitally important is building up and keeping your combo meter. Every time DK performs an aerial feat, like flinging himself off of a giant flower or bouncing off of an orange squishy blob, he attracts a colorful little sparkly thing. These indicate how high the combo meter currently is and how many beats per banana will be earned. This also means that a single banana can be worth much, much more than just one beat. And if you get hit or touch the ground, the combo resets. There are entire levels built around the goal of keeping the combo alive and never touching the ground, thus elevating the tension to be built up insanely high. 
when I was earning platinums, I was either smashing the bongos like I was auditioning for Whiplash or clapping in a frenzy like it was a curtain call for Hamilton. I was literally working up a sweat playing this game. I was building up calluses on my hands from the intensity. Jungle Beat burned off more calories in three levels than Wii Fit did in three years. It's outrageously satisfying to hit 1200 beats because you have to work for it physically. Now I haven't played the new play control version of this game on the Nintendo Wii, but I can't help but feel like the bongos are the way to go. The rest of the office might say that the bongo slapping and clapping is loud and makes it harder to get editing done, but I'm the boss and I say the bongos stay. Bongos are awesome, you guys. Jungle Bee does adhere to one rule of Donkey Kong games, incredibly difficult but also satisfying. Jungle Beat rewards the player with more levels to play with the more crests I earned up to a certain point. Mastering the combo system and exploring each level thoroughly were the keys to unlocking some secret end credit screens. And while I understand how some people might want more, I was totally satisfied with how I felt after completing this game. There are 72 total crests to collect. However, you don't need all 72 to fight the secret final boss, Ghastly King. You only need 51 crests to get this battle going. This final fight is a rehash of the fight against Cactus King, though it is a bit harder. After defeating Ghastly King, DK is joined in the credits by the other senators, I mean Kongs, that he defeated throughout the game. No hard feelings, everyone. The credits also show some great tips on how to build up better beat combos that were genuinely helpful to earn the remaining crests. It feels amazing to earn all of the crests. However, once you get all 72, there isn't really a concrete reward. More characters join DK and the other Kongs in the credits, specifically these adorable, colorful little ninja apes. And after the credits are done, the level select music changes. I wasn't all that bothered by these cosmetic extras. I earned that background music and those alternate credit screens. And I had the sore shoulders and tired arms to show for it. When I completed Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, there were zero deaths because I'm the bongo king that never lets his beats drop below zero. 72 crests earned, including the shiny platinums. 13 hours of total playtime with plenty of calluses on the palms of my hands to prove it. And one fantastic underappreciated accessory that I dearly hope comes back in some form or another for future Donkey Kong games. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat is a wild ride. It's fun, it's ridiculous, and does what my favorite Donkey Kong games tend to do, offer a whole lot of challenge while not completely pushing the player away. I wish there were some more concrete gameplay related rewards, and since the game is so short and fun, I definitely had a blast the entire time. So, with that in mind guys, I give this game my completionist rating of Complete It. Complete It! That's all time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let me know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you like the show, do me a favor, hit the like button on this video and leave a comment down below on why you did what we do. Also, hit that subscribe button and click the bell to stay up to date on all the notifications regarding the show. We do new videos on Wednesdays and Saturday. Guys, I've been Gerard the Completionist. Check out HD RGB consoles in the description box down below, and we'll see you next week for the brand new episode. Bye.